All right, what's up everybody? So a bit of a different video today, but I did get a comment on one of my more recent videos asking if I've ever done the FFMI calculator through either Menno Henselman's or through Greg Knuckles. And I actually haven't done these before. Uh, he just wanted to get my thoughts. So I figured this would just be kind of a fun video just to see where I stand uh, and what these calculators show my total potential is as I advance overall in my bodybuilding career. So the Menno Henselman's one, I actually did plug in my numbers already and I just kind of skimmed through it. I didn't really look at the potential or anything. I just, I just looked at the uh, overall assessment of my strengths and weaknesses that it gave me and whatnot. So I'm going to do this again. I have my stats written down and everything. I also pulled up the Greg Knuckles one. I couldn't figure out how to use this one. I'm not sure if the website's down or if I'm doing something wrong, but either way, like I'll type, I'll type in my numbers and press enter and nothing happens. I'm pretty sure the calculations are supposed to just populate in these boxes beneath where I can actually plug stuff in, but nothing really happens. But either way, there's a pretty interesting table right here, which just shows 20 years worth of Mr. America winners in their FFMI listed next to it. So I'm going to use this just to kind of go over later in the video. But either way, let's start on this chart here. So basically what this is, is a total FFMI calculator and predictor for my natural muscle building potential. So basically what I do, plug in my stats and uh, based on my measurements and all my other statistics, body fat percentage, height, weight, whatnot, it will give me an estimate of what my strengths and weaknesses are and then what my potential is as far as total muscle I can gain. I think it will just give me an, an end goal body weight at a specific body fat percentage. But either way, uh, my measurements I have written down here just to briefly run through those. Five foot nine, so 69 inches and 175 centimeters. That's my total height. That has never changed since I was probably 14 or something. Uh, I'm unfortunately not getting taller, I don't think. We'll see what happens over the next few years, but I don't think that will change. My body weight is 202 pounds, uh, 91.6 kilos. Uh, kilos give me a headache. I, I can't stand doing the conversion. Body fat percentage is probably 20%. It's so hard to predict, uh, but I'd say I'm about 20%. I can kind of see some abs, but not really. My waist has definitely gotten thicker uh, than when I was at, say, 175 or something. So obviously, I've gained a decent amount of fat. Uh, I'm definitely not fat yet. I don't feel like I'm at peak bulk, but I'm definitely not lean. So 20%, probably a pretty safe estimate. If I had a gun to my head, I'd say I'm probably 20%. As far as measurements go, some of these might seem kind of weird, like the wrist and ankle measurements. This is purely just for this calculator. They don't actually matter that much. Uh, supposedly, they do play some type of factor into total muscle potential because I think part of their part of their calculation is taking your skeleton and just your frame into account for total muscle mass. So I'm sure this has some type of predictor that they're using. Uh, I don't really know how these measurements stack up for somebody my height. I don't know if they're above or below average, but... Uh, I guess we'll see. So muscle measurements beneath this, the torso we're doing relaxed. This is just as far as you can get up into your armpits. Make sure the tape measure is square. So make sure it's not falling down or going up in any diagonal directions or anything. Just make sure it's in a perfect circle around your upper torso in a relaxed state beneath your armpits. Upper arm flexed. Uh, flex as hard as you possibly can. Any, any tenth of an inch counts. Uh, I figured I'd give you guys a bit of an update. So I'm at 17.7 inches here, 0.3 away from 18. So we'll see, not too far away. Series will probably go on for another few months at least, I'd say, though, but we shall see. The forearm measurement, this is flexed, so you're closing your fist. So you're not flexing it as much as you can. You're tightening it as much as you can, but you're not flexing it to get a big measurement. If you were to bend your arm and pronate your wrist, that would probably increase it by a couple inches. So this is just... Uh, uh, a straightened arm. So hold your arm out in front of you and squeeze your fist. Take that measurement there. Neck is below the Adam's apple at the smallest point. Very straightforward. I actually wrote that down. So I don't know why I'm even saying it. Thigh. Yeah. Mid thigh relaxed. Uh, I'm actually shocked that it was 25 inches. My quads have grown a lot from proper quad training throughout just the past year or so in general. It's actually pretty wild, uh, especially the past few months have been super useful for my quad training with all these new all these new machines i'm using at the commercial gym just the knee bend i get in each lift is pretty insane and obviously it just trains the quad so much better when you're locked in to a machine like that not that you can't do it with free weights but I, when i was so focused on 
low bar squatting and just getting to parallel and coming back up and not even paying attention whatsoever to my knee bend, it's unlocked a ton of quad gains for me. So you can still get huge with free weights. It's just a matter of keeping uh, keeping in mind your knee bend, just being mindful of that overall. Calves, 15.2, so much smaller than my arms and my neck, just crazy. That's probably my biggest weak spot. It used to be quads, but I would have to say at this point now, calves are pretty obviously my new uh, champion for biggest weakness. Waist at the smallest point relaxed, 35.3 inches. Uh, I don't have a small waist by any means. This is just um, something that I think a lot of people worry about too much. A lot of the whole aesthetics community is so focused on having a small waist that they don't ever bulk to build up muscle. And they don't realize that if you bulk, you can build up your back, your arms, your delts, your upper chest, and get a crazy V taper. And then you'll actually have potentially even a better V taper, even when your waist is bigger, because your upper body muscles are just that much bigger. So it might be surprising that my waist is actually that big, especially for my height where I'm only 5'9". It seems like a pretty big measurement, and it kind of is a big measurement, uh, but I, I think the amount of muscle I've built up has been able to kind of offset that. So if I can be motivating in any way to not have people be so attached to just having this tiny little waist, which is largely genetic, uh, I, I hope I can help out in that way because... When I was power building in that whole aesthetics community on Instagram and whatnot, people are just so obsessed with keeping their waist small, and it's it's always at the expense of the muscle gains you make. So I don't think it's something that's worth focusing on too, too much. Definitely not as much as people do uh, in that kind of community. So not to just knock on that community and whatnot, but either way, let's get into this. So I want to estimate my natural muscular potential definitely going inches and pounds 20 percent body fat desired percent i'll just keep that at 20 for now probably not my long-term desired but i'll keep it at 20 for now five feet nine inches my weight is 202 in pounds and oh i am a male wrist circumference is 7.5 inches ankles were nine I don't know what happened there, but 7 point. Why is it going negative? Okay. I don't know why this is going negative. What is going on? Torso was 47. Upper arms were 17.7. Forearms were 12.65, was it? Yep, good memory out of that one neck was i think neck was 17.2 yep that was 25 calves were 15.2 but i'll confirm all right i don't know what's going on with my keyboard might be the website actually calves 15.2 there we go results lean bot mm. Am I smaller than I think, or did I type something in wrong? Okay, it put me at 180. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here, but either way. I was going to say, if I still have that much left to gain, I'm doing something wrong. All right, <laughs> lean body mass left to gain. This, this looks more accurate. I'll do one more review. So let's see. All right. 20% body fat, that's also my desired, 5'9", 202, 7.5, wrist, 9 ankle, 47 torso, 17.7 arm, 12.65 forearm, 17.2 neck, 25 thigh, 15.2 calves, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so 21.4, that's, that's quite a bit. That seems very intimidating, just hearing that number. That's a lot of muscle left to gain. Uh you could kind of take this two ways. So you could either see this as I'm smaller than I think, or I can go farther than I think. Obviously, I think I have a pretty good gauge of where I'm at. This is roughly what I would have, would have assumed anyways. To me, this seems like I have probably one more like really big push of building muscle. And then from there, it's probably going to be a pretty steady gain where maybe it's a couple pounds 
here and there over the course of a year or six months or whatnot. So, yeah, th this does sound about right. Uh, fat mass left to lose, 5.4. Not entirely sure what that means in, in this specific context. I guess it's telling me I have to lose fat. 5.4 pounds isn't too bad. I, I don't really care to lose that, but I guess if it's telling me to, I guess I should, right? So, okay. Lean body mass left to gain, 21.4 pounds. Yeah, so that's like... That's like one really good final push of maybe adding six to eight pounds over a year, maybe 18 months, and then like another 10, 12-ish pounds over the rest of my lifting career. So that's not that's not that crazy. So if, if I'm 25 now, that's maybe adding six to eight pounds this year, then I'm 26, maybe 27, and I can gain one, one and a half pounds until I'm mid-30s or something that doesn't sound that that unrealistic uh but it is my potential though so am i guaranteed to just have a smooth sailing right to my potential that's probably more difficult than i'm imagining right now uh this is probably the, the more realistic thing i see is maybe gaining three to four maybe five pounds of muscle once in one year and then maybe one to two pounds for quite a while until I really hit my limit and I'd imagine there's going to be a pretty good amount of plateaus in the meantime there whether it's because I'm maybe not doing what I need to do because I think your training does have to be very specific to really get into these final few pounds of muscle or if I'm just like still not in that like hardcore mindset 24 7 that i need to be to just train as hard as i possibly can and really get everything activated so we'll see i think i think this will be kind of like the true test of of being a lifter because it's it's so hard to gain these last few pounds i say few it's more than a few but the last kind of home stretch of building muscle naturally is going to be difficult it already is super difficult where I'm at now. I'm not, I'm not even like advanced yet. I'm still probably just a later overall intermediate stage. So uh, let's see what it's saying for these underdeveloped or overdeveloped kind of weak points and strong points. Uh, neck 4% overdeveloped. I'm not sure what the reference point is for this. If this is just compared to other people or if this is just what they would assume is the ideal physique. I probably should have looked into that a little bit more. But either way, Neck 4% overdeveloped, arms 3% overdeveloped. So never in a million years would I imagine that my neck, which I have never trained directly consistently, is more overdeveloped than my arms, which I basically dedicated half of my channel to documenting. So that's a little bit weird. <laughs> uh, either way, yeah, arms overdeveloped. That's kind of crazy. I'm... Either way, I'm pretty proud of having the arms overdeveloped in whatever context this is in. Just goes to show how much control you do have over your training in a muscle that was just a weak spot for me for so long. Torso, 2% overdeveloped. That's pretty good. I'm fine with that. Uh, forearm, 7% underdeveloped. That's wild. I think that also kind of goes to show that tr you do have to really train your forearms directly to maximize their development. Even though I've gone through phases of uh, training my forearms hard, I always kind of assumed, and, and I still do believe this to a pretty solid extent, that you can maintain your forearm size pretty well without training them because they'll just kind of maintain through your back and bicep training anyways. Getting growth is kind of asking a lot at this point, but uh, at least maintaining the gains you've made shouldn't be that crazy based on your back and bicep training. So 7% underdeveloped is pretty wild, especially with the calves only 5% underdeveloped. I... I guess this is saying my forearms are a bigger weak point. That's pretty shocking to me, for sure. Uh, th these are all definitely throwing me off a little bit. But again, this could be just compared to average, and this could just be an entirely genetic thing where I'm my forearms and calves are just super lanky, which, which I know they are. Uh, so I kind of have to overcompensate by just training those extra hard compared to, say, like my shoulders or, or chest or back or something thighs two percent overdeveloped is insane to me too like i there's something there's something off about this in my in my personal opinion if i'm going to compare myself to other people there's just no way that my my thighs are overdeveloped i i don't see that that doesn't make sense to me so it's saying for 
maximums and compared to my current. So torso, I've achieved 94% of my total size, saying my maximum is 50.1 inches. That's pretty big. It's saying my maximum upper arm size, and I would assume these are at the body fat percentage I set to, to be desired, so 20%. Maximum arm size is 18.6. That's not, that's not that wild to me. And then as far as the percentages go, I guess this is assuming zero. Yes, yeah, so this would be saying zero inches is zero percent. And if I was at 25 inches, that would be 50 percent. Um, that's probably not the way that I would go about it. So these are these are obviously going to be inflated quite a bit because it's assuming your starting point is zero. Uh, but say for say for the arm measurement, I started at 14 inches so my total growth is 4.6 inches i haven't achieved 95 percent of that yet i've achieved i don't know without what that would be 75 to 80 percent of my total growth so i don't really like the way that they did these but either way it is what it is they're just so much more achieved they're so, so much big bigger of percentages than they really should be but whatever um forearms yeah maybe i should start training forearms directly again i think this thing's trying to tell me that neck that's wild to me that my neck is that developed it's probably it's probably just from just so many power shrugs over the years just getting my upper traps and kind of like the back of my neck built up quite a bit uh because i've never trained neck directly long enough to have this kind of number so i think i think there's something a little bit off with these overall um but e either way i don't I don't think my neck is small. I think my neck is pretty proportional to the rest of my physique. It's just funny to see that the muscle I don't train is, uh, yeah, quite literally my most developed muscle. That's weird. Uh, thighs maximum is 26.6. Um, it's a relaxed measurement, so it's really tough to say. The, the relaxed measurements don't seem to be too, too different from the flexed measurements, though I will say that. I haven't measured my quads in a, in a bit, but uh, I, I can't imagine they're that much bigger than 25 in, in the mid-thigh when they're flexed. The upper thigh, maybe, yeah, because there's the adductors in there. But mid-thigh, especially with my specific genetics, too, it's I have cone-shaped quads. They're not like the equal amount of muscle on the entire quad all the way down to the knee. So my, my upper quads are going to be a massive measurement that makes them sound bigger than they are but the mid to low quad will make them basically it will basically make the measurement seem smaller than it actually is so uh double-edged sword i guess in measuring measuring your actual quads uh at least in my case will dictate a lot of what these numbers will say um and then calves yeah pretty underdeveloped 17.5 inch calves i I don't know if if I'm being black pilled or just overall skeptical. That just seems that just seems massive. I mean, my calves are 15.2. Uh, the last I checked, they were just smaller than that flexed. Uh, I I can't picture myself with 17.5 inch calves, but who knows? Maybe I'll get there. And I have been training them pretty consistently for a while. To me, this just seems like a stubborn muscle that I'll have to experiment with some more crazy stuff to actually reach my potential there but who knows definitely a genetic weakness but i don't i don't think that will determine what my overall potential is i, I think it will just be a slower kind of grindy journey to get there and then th this is hilarious too maximum natural body weight 228.8 and i would assume that's 20 percent body fat that's like complete beefcake territory that's almost 230 I'm 5'9". That I just I can't imagine being that heavy. I guess it just shows how absurdly big you can get naturally. Uh, it's to a number where even as I kind of approach late intermediate, early advanced stats in bodybuilding, it just shows how much bigger you can actually get. So who knows how accurate this is? Uh, time will tell, and I'm hoping to kind of figure that out in the in the duration that I'm doing the YouTube channel for. So that's pretty cool. Uh, FFMI is 24.1. That sounds about right. I know the there's that whole thing about 25 being the natural limit, which doesn't seem to be true at all. Uh, and we'll kind of look at that in a second. I'm not going to go too in depth on that, but just kind of interesting to see. How does your FFMI compare? So quick chart on FFMI numbers. 28 is the largest natural trainee ever scientifically documented. I actually believe he was in that chart, which I'll go over briefly next. 
25.4 is a world-class natural pro bodybuilder. So these are like the top world champions of natural bodybuilding. That's not that far off, actually. That's kind of motivating. 24.9 is upper limit for most people's genetics. Uh, how they determine that is not something I know. So I'll take their word for it for now, uh, at least loosely. So 24.9, that's pretty massive. I mean, that's still almost an entire point of FFMI up from where I'm at now. Uh, average steroid user is 24.8. That's motivating that I'm actually pretty close to that. Uh, internationally competitive bodybuilder, 22.6. That's surprisingly low. That really is surprisingly low because I don't, I don't think I'm that I don't feel like I'm that far ahead of a competitive bodybuilder. I, I didn't even feel like I was at that level of muscle mass, but who knows? I guess it, it's just tough to compare if I've never competed on stage before. 21.8 competitive power athlete. So I would assume this is just like an average power lifter, maybe Olympic lifter. Uh, and then 18.9 is the average Caucasian. Let's move on to this chart here, which I thought was pretty interesting. So these are all Mr. America winners from 1939 to 1959. If I remember correctly, 1945 or 1944 is when steroids were invented, but they were not practical and access wasn't uh, very practical either. So I think people usually say 1939 to 1944 is like, if you're very conservative and you're very skeptical, these are the guys to look at for sure. Uh, and then up to 1953, I think it was on the same article, they said you can be, if you're a moderately skeptical person, you can kind of trust up to 1953. And then if you're just a little bit skeptical, but kind of optimistic, I guess you can kind of trust all 20 of these years, which for myself personally, if you just look at the numbers, it's not like they increase by a crazy amount from the start to the end here in this little era. So I would just say it's probably safe to say they're all natural, or even if a couple of these guys weren't natural, maybe towards the more recent years, uh, maybe the actual drugs they were taking didn't have quite of an, enough of an impact to really push them beyond a natural limit anyways. So I think it's, it's promising to see that these FFMIs are pretty big. There's definitely no hard limit at 25 here. Uh, it, it is about the average 25.4 they have right here. So uh, it's interesting. And I mean, keep in mind, this is, this is years ago, this is 39 to 59. Uh, if we're going to act like this is still certainly the limit, I think that's a little bit naive. I would say that with obviously an increase in not just the information we have, but the, the access that each person has to this information, especially recently like th this is changing year by year this isn't just oh our generation generally has more access i mean the information we have now is years ahead of uh 2018 like the, the information that we're seeing now is different than when i started lifting which was only seven years ago so that's pretty cool to see and there's definitely a few guys that are like well above 25 too i mean you have a guy at 27.3 here i actually don't recognize the name stanko this must be the guy they're talking about, about the largest record of natural, 28, 1949, Dillinger, Dellinger, I don't know how to pronounce his name, unfortunately. Kind of sad that these guys aren't uh, more famous than than they are. I think the only only people I recognize on here would be obviously Steve Reeves, and then I think that's probably Bill Pearl here. But other than that, I don't really recognize that many of these names, aside from Grimmick. Um but yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. Uh, I'll put the link in the description so you guys can do the same chart over here too. Definitely pretty interesting. I think if you're somewhat of an optimistic person, this is definitely pretty motivating. So yeah, with that said, I'll keep it at that for today. I'll see you guys in the next video.